Welcome Girish. Thanks Vana. Uh, we are going to take uh, the strategies now. Strategies, yes. This is which chapter in the book? Uh, this is the fourth the chapter. Fourth chapter. The fourth chapter uh, we are going to take. Uh, if you go through the book, uh, it seems a little complex in understanding. Right. But uh, we'll try to make it a uh, little simpler. Okay. Uh, we have already discussed what a long or short position means. Right. Basically, when you are buying uh, the base currency, you are uh, entering into a long position. Right. And when you are selling the base currency, you are entering into a short position. So it has to be clearly understood what a long and short position means. Right. Okay. So we are going through the long position now. Yes, long position in currency futures. The long position in the future segment. Okay. So, uh, first of all, very important thing is uh, when you are differentiating between hedging and speculating. Mm -hmm. So, the important difference is that when you have something to protect or when you have an underlying position, mm -hmm. then you are entering into a hedging position. Right, yeah, you have some kind of exposure already yeah. in the market. That, that is Absolutely. why you are entering into Absolutely. a hedging position. When you have an exposure against which you are taking a strategy, which means you are trying to protect something in the market, right. your exposure in the market, right. it means you are hedging yourself. right? And if you have nothing to protect and still you are participating in that market, willing to take some risk, it means you are entering into a speculative position. right? Right. Because you don't have anything to protect, you are simply speculating on the movement of the market. Right. right? So that is the basic difference between your speculation and hedging. And here we'll have a look at uh, hedging strategies, how you can effectively hedge your position in the market. Right. So, are we looking at speculative as well or just only hedging in for the, for the examination? Uh, we'll have a look at uh, one or two speculative also, but... Uh, Major hedging, 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 hedging strategies. So, okay. So, if you have an exposure against which you're strategizing, you're doing a hedging strategy. Yes. And if you have no exposure and just doing it for, uh, I mean, the, you're taking a risk for just rewards. Yeah. Uh, then you're a, you're in a speculative uh, yeah, position. Yeah. So very thin line, basically. Absolutely. Right. Uh, so, so let's 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 look at your illustration. Yes. And so you're you talking of long, long position futures. What what does this mean? As we have already explained, uh, when you are entering into a currency future contract, you are trading a contract. So basically, when you are buying a base currency, it means you are entering into a long position. Buying base currency. Buying base currency. Would mean so in our uh, example, it would be buying up dollars, basically. Basically, entering into contract, you are looking at going long. Going long. Right. Okay. So, uh, we'll take examples of exporters in this case. Okay. Right. So, because they are the real uh, people who are susceptible to this foreign exchange. Yeah, they're, they're the, they are the important exporters are the maximum... Yeah. Uh, uh, people who are who are who are who take a position for hedging. Yes. So yes, yeah, let's let's take the example. Yeah. It would be quite relevant to take their example. Absolutely. So for example, on first of August two thousand nine, Mr. X, a currency trader, expects that dollar will strengthen against the rupee in the coming months. Right. Uh, this is an example which we are talking about a speculative position, right? Okay. Then when we'll move on to a hedging position. Okay, so he's a currency trader he's and he's, currency. he's just wanting to take a speculative position. Yeah. So and he expects that dollar will strengthen against the rupee in the coming months. Right. So what will he do in a currency future contract? He will, he will buy USD. Yes. So because he's, he's, he's expecting to go uh, USD to appreciate. Right. So he decides to go long and buys one September USD INR contract at forty five fifty. Okay. Remember, this is the position which is taken on. 1st of August right. right for a so for a contract which is ending on September 1st August he's taking a put on off of the 30th September contract yeah uh, 45.50 yeah. Is, is the price at which he is entering yes. to the contract and this is something which we have already explained to you while we were uh, describing yes we have we've, spo we've spoken of the expiry date we've yeah. spoken so of settlement date so naturally we, we are completely aware of how this works right so uh, he buys this contract at 45.50 and he decides to hold the contract till expiry which means he is uh, not squaring off his position which means yeah. he is not selling a contract. He is wanting it to automatically settle down. Yes. Yeah, he wants an automatic settlement of right. the contract. So the market moves as per his anticipation and the dollar strengthens against the rupee 
and the RBI reference rate moves to 48.50 on 30th of September. Right, the so 48.50. So this the expiry date would have been two days earlier. If I'm just I'm just reiterating, not nothing to do with the calculation, but yes. Yeah. So at 48.50, uh, RBI reference rate mm -hmm. is 48.50. So what what is this gain? That is that the is that the question? Yes. Yeah. So, but, so the the gain would be the three rupees that he is making into the contract size. Absolutely. And we have already talked about how to calculate the profit and loss. So you need to know about the tick movements. Here yeah. in this, there it is uh, simply three rupees difference right. into the lot into size, the, into which the, is into thousand the dollars. Size, yeah. Depending upon your position, here in he had taken a long position On and the market moved as per his expectation. Absolutely. And he gained three thousand. Now. Uh, when you want to differentiate between a speculative and a hedging position, right. very important if the market moves against his expectation, he would have incurred a loss of three thousand. Absolutely, right. So Absolutely, because he's trying to protect money yeah. in that case. Yeah. Here he was just trying to. This was a more of a speculative position yes. because the currency trader. Yes. He just felt that the USD will go up, and therefore he took a position in USD. He went long on USD. And uh, on on 28 September, which was the uh, the expiry date, mm -hmm. uh, he realized that uh, he's making a profit. He's making he's a profit in the market. Basically, is the market has moved as per his expectation, Absolutely. and he has earned a profit of three thousand rupees on a on a single contract. So this is a very simple example of taking long position long in future. Yes. So basically, this is to describe how to take a long position in a. Right, so it's one of the strategies which which helps you. Second is what we're saying is the short position. Short position. Yeah. This will be absolutely opposite of what yeah. we've just discussed. So when you are very clear about the long position, it is very easy to understand what a short position is. It is simply uh, taking a selling a future contract without any exposure in the uh, cash market. So, so again, again, again so, so Mr. X is again a speculative uh, trader. Mm -hmm. and he decides okay i'll i'll go at 45.50 on 1st of august because he expects ex that market uh, he yeah. expects the market to go up but uh, no he expects that in the coming months uh, dollar will depreciate okay so this is oh, okay so yeah. he's 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 bought so uh, the yeah, this market five, gives five, you five. both option that if if you want, if you think that the currency will appreciate the base currency will appreciate you'll go long if you think that the base currency will depreciate, you, you go want, short. You go short to earn then in this market, right. to make so, a profit. So what he's done is he expected the uh, the market to go down on the USD to go down. Yeah. So he bought rupee, or he short or uh, bought rupee or he short dollar. Short dollar. So that that's that's what the technical term is. Yeah, shorting. And and so, so he did the same thing. Forty five point five zero. The market went as per his expectation. Went to forty three point five zero. He made five into uh, one thousand. No, uh, so two rupees. So this is two into one thousand, or two thousand rupees per contract. Per contract by going short, and that the market really fell. Yeah. So basically, if you are trading and uh, you have to take a position, a relative position, as per your expectation in the market. Right. So if you think that USD will appreciate, you will definitely go long on the contract. Right. If you think that USD will depreciate, you will short on the contract Absolutely. to make profit. Wonderful. And rest, uh, cross your fingers that the market moves as per your expectations. Yeah, I, I, think, I think most of the speculators do that in any case. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, wonderful. So what we'll do is we'll uh, quickly wind up this video. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll take the next part, which is uh, hedging using currency futures, yes, we'll uh, in the in the next part. So what we've done is we've done uh, long uh, going long and going short, short, and the two strategies which are basically speculative in nature. Speculative. Let's let's look at hedging also in the next video. Thank you, Girish. Okay. Uh, let's meet very shortly.